Hello everyone, welcome back at the YouTube channel of chess.com. I am Luma Grandmaster Kiritsa Salashvili and in this video I'll show you the best moves of Stockfish, one of the strongest chess engines. We're starting our first game where Stockfish plays with white pieces against Lillestein. Lillestein made the latest move rook from b8 to h8. The position is double-edged. White is attacking on the queen side, black is attacking on the king side, and both sides have very active pieces. After this move, Stockfish went for a rook sacrifice, which exposed the black king and also guarantees a draw, as black king cannot really escape from checks if white wants to give a perpetual check. But this video is about the best moves, and here it comes. An amazing rook sacrifice, second rook sacrifice, rook f8. Yes, this rook is hanging and black can simply take this rook, where white continues to give a check. We'll come back to this main line, uh, but before that I want to show you why, why to sacrifice this rook just like that, and why not to give a check right away. For instance, queen b6. King goes on the side, now to take a pawn with a check, another check, and c6. Something similar happened also in the game, but the rook was not here. So now the threat is queen b7 checkmate, but black is taking the um, action now with knight g3 check. This knight forces white to open up the h file, now king on h1 is just hopeless. Bishop h2 is only move, very bad looking move, but after queen e1 check, queen g1 and rook takes bishop on h2 is a checkmate. So for this reason, white decided to get distract this rook from h file and that's why rook f8 is such a strong move because after this checks and capture, and then c6, there is not knight g3 as dangerous as it was in the previous line. After knight g3, white can simply take it, and now black has no time to capture it back and open up the h-file as checkmate is right there on the board. So, uh, instead of the sacrifice, here black went for knight c5. This knight is attacked two ways, however, white is not going to capture it, because if white captures this knight, then Queen gets on a file. This queen controls the whole line. There is no any single check, and on top of it, queen g2 checkmate is a serious threat, and white has a bad position, losing position. So instead of this, there is a check on a5, very strong move. Uh, we can come back later after the uh, seeing the game. What happens if rook goes on f7 or rook goes on g7 and tries to avoid a checkmate instead of knight c5? So the main line and the game is with a check, queen a5, king goes on b8, and now c7. This pawn is getting very closer to the back ring when white will eventually queen this pawn. And after this check, now white simply captures the rook back and the threat is c8 queen. Black cannot stop, black cannot give a check, and this is hopeless position. After king c6, here Stockwish went for d7. This move opens up the square for the queen and the knight is under attack by check. And also another pawn is closer to the back ring. Of course, c8 uh, queen is winning and um, this is also easily winning position as the rook will be captured next move. But we're talking about the computer game. So after a king c6, here Stockfish calculated a checkmate and there's a checkmate in time moves. I'm very quickly going to show you this checkmate pattern. Let's say knight d7, now second queen, another check, another check, another check and checkmate. In the end by two queens and a bishop. So that was a beautifully played by Stockfish, which started from the rook f8 sacrifice. Actually, it started with rook a6 sacrifice. Stockfish first sacrificed this rook here and guaranteed a draw, and then another rook sacrifice came across. 
Um, and here at this position, I promised to show you what happens if rooks try to get uh, on seventh rank to control b7 square. For instance, if rook f7, then white has a checkmate in just two moves. On the back rank, this square is controlled by the bishop, king, and escape. And if another rook gets on g7, now back rank is not a weakness, but there is a c7 move, and this pawn cuts the rook from all the action on the seventh rank, and it is impossible to avoid a checkmate on a7. This queen and the bishop are teaming up on this diagonal and black is just hopeless even though black has an extra two rooks. So what a beautiful two rook sacrifices happened in this game and now we're getting to the second example and things are as crazy as it was here. The second game which we would love to show you is this one where Stockfish plays with white pieces against Lila Chess Zero. White has sacrificed the pawn for better development and active pieces. Black's king is not castled and is in the center, which will be obviously white's target. Black's latest move is f4 to attack the queen. Queen is sort of stuck, has not much of the squares. Um, but anyway, Stockwish never planned to move this queen away, but instead to play knight f4. Very strong sacrifice. White decided to sacrifice a piece for two pawns uh, and open all these diagonals and files where king is in the center is a very strong strategic idea. White could also take with a bishop. However, Stockfish decided to give up the knight, which is quite limited and is in the edge of the board, and to keep dark square bishop, which creates a lot of threats, starting from bishop e5 right now, because I cannot take this bishop back as white can take a bishop and there is a pin on d file as queen is on d8 not guarded and white wins a piece back. So black's next move is quite logical. Black decides to move this queen away and also to guard the knight in the center. And this is the moment where I'm going to show you the best move of this game and something incredible. It took me a while to understand why this move is good, why only this move is good, and how come, what's, what's the idea of this? How can move like this change the position so dramatically? So we're going to see this move, uh, but before that I would love to call your attention to all these moves which are on the board starting from bishop h6, Rook d6, rook e5. None of these works are working and none of these works are as strong as a little move here, h3. This is the move which deserves to be called the best move and the strong move in this position. Very small move, just h3 right there, but has a beautiful idea. I'm going to show you what's the idea. Uh, for instance, the move like rook d6 looks so tempting to break down the center and after queen takes this rook, then to activate pieces more, get the rook in the game, but mm -mm, it's not working as white has a back rank checkmate. So remember in the position where white played h3, if white had this pawn on h3, king could run away on h2 square. So for this reason, h3 is the best move Stockfish played here in this position. Uh, coming back in this uh, line, you might ask here, why not to take it with a queen? And the answer is very simple, as white is down to rook in the endgame, there is no chance to win. So this sacrifice is not working, and there is also another beautiful looking move, such as bishop h6 check. We cannot take this bishop back as there is a checkmate on g8. However, black can simply move this king away and be really safe here in the center as moves such as f4 to pin this knight and try to win is not working as black has bishop h4. This is um, horrible for white as the queen and the rook is hanging on this diagonal and the bishop is stuck here on h6. And on top of it, White already sacrificed the piece. So lots of things are happening here and it's absolutely not worthy. But instead of this, 
a move, a calm move such as H3 is simply the best and keeps all of these ideas still as a threat. And black cannot survive here. Um, a lila chess zero here played h5, which doesn't really change too much. And now stockfish decided to sacrifice a rook. Hold on. Black takes this rook and another rook sacrifice comes on the way. And as we have seen already in the previous example, stockfish really likes to give up both rooks for a strong attack and from some checkmating nets. This rook is hanging two ways, mm, queen can take, bishop can take. In the game, uh, Lila just decided to trade the bishops. Uh, let's see what happens if bishop takes on d6. This allows white to take it with a bishop and pin the queen. And this is a winning position for white as there is an extra queen and the king is exposed. Um, if queen takes on d6, now bishop takes a bishop and we know that there is not a check made on the back rank. King has h2 square, king is safe, there is no more checks. And now black has a serious issues with the rook. Rook is hanging with the king as there are some checks from g7 for f4, also from d6. And honestly, this rook and the bishop don't really do much here for this position. And they're just uh, from neighbors, like neighbor board. Uh, so white has here winning position and black cannot really survive. Let's get into the game after rook d6. Black here allowed white to capture this uh, bishop with a check and to activate queen even more. Black has two options to try to keep on the king side or to try to run away on the queen side, which by the way, for now it's impossible as rook just cuts this uh, file. Uh, let's start with king g7 and see what happens here. Queen goes on d4 check. I cannot cover this check as the queen will be hanging. But now white has these beautiful checks and queen gets on g6. And from g6 now uh, this queen creates a serious threat and there is a checkmate in just two moves starting with rook d8 check. Queen has to take and queen f7. This bishop and queen team up and checkmate the king on f8. So king cannot stay on the king side as we have seen already. We have to check out what happens after king e8. Now white makes another fancy move and sacrifices bishop. So what happens after queen takes the bishop in case if black refuses this uh, sacrifice, now white will just uh, move this bishop on this diagonal and eventually win the game. So black has to take the bishop, queen e5, check, and the rook is hanging. King cannot move away because this rook is, um, is gone and now the queen will be gone. Uh, so here black has to give back the material and try to survive. Uh, but after bishop e6, rook takes this bishop and king d7 is met by the check by the queen. So. King goes on c8 and the moment when black thought the king survives, now white has a strong move. Rook e7, the threat is so serious, queen c7 checkmate or queen e7, queen b7 later checkmate in two moves. Black has to give up a queen and here we have this position where white has a queen and two pawns for the rooks. But this is winning position for white. First of all, because of the material advantage and second of all, because of the bad replacement of the pieces. The king is in between the rooks. These rooks cannot connect. Uh, it's going to take a while and white's next moves, just to give checks, uh, never allows these rooks to be connected. And for now, this queen gives a check and also attacks the rook on h8 and the pawn on a5. So black is pretty much forced to go on the a5 to give up this pawn uh, with a check. Another check comes. And now, once again, the rook is hanging. King can't go backwards as white will simply capture this rook. And this is just losing position. Now, a5, queen b6 is a checkmate threat. So black has to give another pawn. And this is quite easy for stockfish for any of us to convert this huge material advantage into a win.
So what a beautiful game uh, by Stockfish. We have seen several sacrifices in just one game. Started with a knight sacrifice. Then we have seen this little beautiful move with a nice idea to save the king, to secure the king's position first and then to uh, blow the center. Now we have a double rook sacrifice and a bishop sacrifice in the end. This is our third example where we do have the same opponents, but color reversed. We do have Stockwish with black pieces and Lila Chassero with white pieces. And this is quite common position for King's Indian defense where black attacks on the king side with the pawns and the pieces and white attacks on the queen side. You might ask about this knight, how this knight got over here and the road of this knight is knight d2, knight b3, knight a5, knight c6 and knight a7. There's a lot of moves here and the idea of this knight maneuvering is to get light square bishop which is not even developed but this is one of the strong pieces for black as very often uh, when white plays h3 this bishop is sacrificed for this pawn and the white has a very bad position. So, uh, after all this maneuvering and everything, White decided to capture the light square bishop. However, this is not the best move here and it allows Black to play very strong move g3. Uh, this pawn move allows White to um, capture the pawn and in fact this is a pawn sacrifice. Uh, for instance, if White takes the pawn on g3 and then once again with a bishop it will be h4 and now queen takes the knight. The trade is h3, knight h5, knight f4, knight g3. So black has achieved a lot on the king side and white achieved only one thing to trade the knight for the light square bishop. So this position is a big advantage for black. Uh, instead of this, white decided to get his bishop back next to the king and try to guard the king and now black takes the knight and we do have b5. So here the idea for white is to push the forces on the queen side as much as possible because on the king side it's not white's play. So we do have knight h7, a very strong idea and you might ask why not h3 here, like why not to close this king side and there will be no chance to break through with the pawns, seems like king is safer here, but the answer is knight g5 and now this threat is so serious that white can be checkmated after this peace sacrifice on h2. So White will not really touch this pawn on h3, even though the light screw bishop from c8 is gone, it is still quite dangerous. And instead of this, White is trying to play on the queen side. So we do have now pawn pushes. And look at this position, look at this beautiful chain of the pawns, which goes all the way to g3. And also this pawn on h3 creates a threat uh, that black can at any moment just expose the white king on h1. Uh, right now, white plays queen c2. White tries to locate the pieces on the second rank, as second rank is a weakness for, for white, and also tries to trade the queen on c5. Knight g5 was played. Rook goes on the second rank once again, and now black decides to uh, trade the pawns to weaken white's position even more. So after knight g2, we do have queen h3. Now the threat such as g takes h2 and knight h4 is quite crucial for white. So there is a move bishop a6, and this is a move out of desperation. Bishop sacrifice, which was obviously uh, captured by the rook, and b7. White right is trying all the best to get black's attention on the queen side now, queen c7, and a b8 queen is a threat, so black has to stop this. And after queen c7, this is at the third game, third example, where I'm going to show you double rook sacrifice, starting with rook b7. Beautiful sacrifice and now another rook sacrifice. So what's going on? Let's let's take a closer look. Now after rook takes rook, which didn't happen in the game, 
there is a beautiful checkmate on the board. If you want to solve this by yourself, you can pause the video, take your time and solve uh, this tactic. It is really, really beautiful. Or just uh, follow me and see what happens. So after rook takes rook, we do have queen sacrifice, queen g2, white is forced to capture the queen back and knight h4 jack. King cannot go anywhere else but to h1 and there is a checkmate by g pawn, g2 checkmate. So this beautiful checkmate was not played in the game. Instead, after rook sacrifice, uh, white decided to keep this rook on the second rank, like chase the rook. And now we do have this trade and king h7. Uh, black now will play a little bit more chill, chill moves, like king goes um, closer to the action and also we're gonna see some knight moves. All the queen side is just uh, treated, there's no pieces on this side and all the action goes on the king side and we know that black is just stronger on this side. So here we have several more moves. Knight goes on h3, um, queen already created all the danger, now it's time for knight. Obviously this knight wants to capture the bishop on g1 and then to checkmate king on h2, so queen has to help the uh, bishop and in case if knight takes this bishop, now queen will get back uh, next to the king and try to guard this king. Uh, Stockfish makes a strange move here, king h6, which looks like um, Stockfish just passes the turn of the moves to Lilichess, and Lilichess is obviously in Suxwank here. So, knight e1, look at this moves, just not good looking pieces here. So, bishop goes now on f6, and the idea is to improve the bishop position. Which can go on a5 and try to trade it for the knight, which guards uh, some weaknesses on the king side. So here we have knight trade and bishop a5. Yeah, this bishop is actually hanging. But white cannot take this bishop as there is a checkmate on h2. So earlier I mentioned that there is a weakness on the second rank, and as you can see, all the sacrifices that black made was pointed out the weakness on the second rank. So now queen has to just uh, move away as the white's next move and we do have bishop trade. F f3 pawn now is hanging with a check but black decided to play knight h4 to increase the pressure even more and actually to avoid after queen f3 queen g2 move this move will be just impossible. So after rook e2, queen f3, and the game ended shortly after this capture. What a beautiful and instructive game here by Stockfish. Uh, in the king's Indian defense, which is a quite common um, position and uh, also very nice idea. So if you play this with black or with white, you should know this idea. So you would just avoid it in your games. So starting with g3 here, beautiful move. And then we do have some improvements here and I would love to go once again at the point where Stockfish are sacrificed two rooks once again. So rook a5 here and the idea is a beautiful here which is ending by a checkmate by g2 pawn. I hope you enjoyed the best moves of Stockfish. Do let me know in the comment section which one was your favorite and don't forget to subscribe YouTube channel of chess.com for more and more chess videos. I am Woman Grandmaster Keritza Zalashvili and thank you very much for watching. We will meet each other in the next videos. Bye!